Hey everyone, welcome to what's happening in real estate this week. I've got Conrad Zarini here, Remax is current Remax Niagara, top broker in Ontario or Canada, and Brian <laughs> Hogben, Mission 35 Mortgages, and myself, Rob Golfie, with Remax, the Golfie team. Two things we're going to talk about. Number of Canadians living abroad. Here are the key points anyway, and inflation cooling and potential Bank of Canada rate cuts. I want to talk about this. There's about 4 million Canadians are moving out of this country. Uh, there's a, a, a thing here. It says uh, from McGill University, uh, it says that reveals that around 4 million Canadians or just over 11 percent of the population were living abroad in 2016. This marks a significant 36 percent increase from 1990. Report highlights that 51 percent of these expats are citizens of uh, by descent, 33% are born in Canada, 15% are naturalized Canadians. The mot uh, motivations for living abroad vary, including permanent emigration and reverse migration. So what the hell is this about? Is it, and, it, and over here it says it is to do with, with the economy. It's people are struggling. But these are people with money that are leaving the country. So we're yeah. trading 4 million people with money yeah. For 4 million people that don't got any money. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, really, well, two things that I see it comes down to a lot are taxes and health care. Mm. Right? We see that quite a bit, right? Because you have a lot of states uh, in, in, in the U.S. where they're taxed way more favorably than you are in Canada. And then also, I was talking to a friend of mine, moved down there, and I know my biggest thought concern was always with the health care because you pay for a privatized service down there. He told me that for a family of four, he's married, got two kids. Do you know how much he pays a year for what I would consider probably reasonably good health care down there? Ten grand a year. Yeah. Now, I know that's, you know, it's extra money, but like for $10,000 to get an MRI when you need one, to oh, see a doctor right. whenever you need one. Like this guy, when he's sick, his doctor gives him his cell phone number and yeah. says, oh, if you got any problems, Conrad, give me a call. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll, and true. you're like. It's true. Like, well, we're, yeah. And the thing is, Canadians don't realize we're paying it for it in our taxes because you got to be making a million dollars in the U.S. to pay 37 percent. So you see what I'm saying? So a hundred thousand, you're paying 50 percent. Now you're no, Brian, it's 100 percent true. And as a matter of fact, the U.S. just changed regulations uh, for filing. So if you have corporations in Canada, you own more than if you have own less than 50 percent. Uh, back a year ago, if you own 10% or, 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 uh, or more, you have to file all your corporate tax in the U.S. Now they went to 50%. So that means that if you have 30% or 40% of a company, you don't have to file those corporate taxes in the U.S. So that's a, that's a huge windfall for people coming that, that want to go to the U.S. Now it's, now it's much less to file in the whole nine yards. So the, the Americans are making it easier to bring in our wealth. <laughs> no kidding right. yeah. see that no. like it's 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 just but i i just couldn't believe the numbers though the the numbers it's are staggering yeah. it's staggering like like it, it just says naturalized canadians show a trend on of onward migration often leaving canada for seven uh for for seven years after arrival between 2017 2019 onward migration was 31% higher than the average impacting uh, immigration targets. More than 15% of immigrants leave Canada within 20 years of gaining permanent residency, often yeah. due to high living costs, difficulties yeah. in getting foreign degrees recognized. Yeah. See that? Yeah, that's true. It's wow. Like, like well, it's... Uh, the well, you, wonder if, you wonder if the immigration numbers are correct, right? Because look, look at housing, right? New housing is down dramatically. There is just no more demand for new housing. So I'm, we're all wondering, like, maybe these numbers are correct. There's that, that migration hasn't been factored in, right? Into all this uh, immigration numbers, right? Right. You know what I mean? They're, they're still counting all these people in here, right? You know what I mean? So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating, right? And they're saying the largest populations of, of Canadians abroad are in the United States, mm -hmm. Hong yeah. Kong. I was surprised that uh, Hong Kong was number two, United Kingdom and Australia, and there are also strong ties in East Asia, significant, significant numbers in South Korea and China. I remember when your dad, Conrad, he was telling me a story when they were looking at, uh, uh, I guess, moving to either Canada or the United States. Am I correct about that? Yes, you're right. Yeah. And he said going to no, sorry, no, Canada or Australia. Sorry. Yeah, that's the choices he had. Yeah. yeah. And he said, well, going to Australia 
it's too much of a, a long trip because if somebody had to go, if you had to go visit back to the country, it was just too long. And back then they were looking at the boat trips, not planes really that yeah. much. And they go, it just takes like, it takes a month to go by boat there. So <laughs> yeah. back and forth, they said, so, so they, that's why they chose Canada. So that's why there is a strong uh, population of Italians in, in Australia. I didn't, you know, yes. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Australia, and also, New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe that. And uh, it's, it's hard to see an Italian with a, Australian accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have cousins. I have cousins. Oh, seriously? Do you? Yeah, yeah. In New Zealand, we have a bunch of cousins that went to New Zealand instead. Oh, yeah. no kidding. No and kidding. That's a beautiful place. I went to university in Australia. I was in Sydney for ten months out of university, and then uh, New Zealand for a month. And it is, I'll tell you, it's not a bad place to be. Not is by that right? Time. Other than the travel, yeah. To be down in the Gold Coast, there, Sydney, Australia, it is beautiful. It is a pristine, like it, it, absolutely it, it, amazing it, country. It is. It is a long travel. Like if somebody yeah. moves out there, uh, like let, let's say a friend of yours moved out there, either you're never going to go or you go once in a lifetime. That's a one. Yeah. That's 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 a once in a lifetime trip. Like oh, I don't, totally, Conrad, yeah. Have you been out there, Conrad? No, I've been to Asia, but never been to uh, never been to Australia. You know, it's, it's too long it's, of a flight. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it is too long of a flight. Yeah, it's well, yeah. And the. And the real estate's expensive there, even though they do open bidding. Their 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 prices have increased uh, uh, more rapidly than they have in Canada and the United States. So uh, by a long shot. So anyway, there a, a little I, plug for open bidding it, that it doesn't it really is. doesn't really make things more. <laughs> it right? help. Everybody says well, everybody <laughs> says Australia is gorgeous, but it's mostly mm. along the coastline. But yeah. but with seventy five percent Australia, nobody lives. I guess it's all desert. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. desert. Yeah, it's uh, it's the outback, right? Like uh, it's yeah, way yeah. out in the middle, airs rock, all that. Yeah, it's all along the coast is where you want to be, and it's beautiful there. But you're right, it's all concentrated in the one area that's mm -hmm. it so okay next thing inflation cooling and potential bank of canada rate cuts so it's saying here the annual inf inflation rate slowed 2.7 percent in april signaling uh, continued easing of price pressures grocery prices dropped price reductions in other sectors uh, economists optimism uh, believe that uh, the latest data supports the possibility of a bank of canada rate cut in june with inflation metrics showing uh, broad-based uh, deceleration market expectations. Financial markets have increased their bets on June rate cuts with expectations rising to almost 55% from 39% earlier. What do yeah. you think? You think they're going to wait till July? It'd be a well, big disappointment because everybody's waiting for I, June. I know, and you're right. And like, there's already the bond, you know, the bond uh, went down about 10 uh, 10 uh, basis points already in, in this announcement. Yeah, so 85% say it's going to be July now. Uh, like so, that. yeah, it's that, yeah. And, but there's supposed to be three rate cuts. Everybody's talking three rate cuts. Could be July, September, and then uh, then later on. Uh, but you know what? It would be nice gift for people to have it, you know, when they're renewing their mortgages now in June. Uh, the, the other thing to take, you know, bankruptcies are up about 50%, so they got to factor wow. that in. You know that too, Brian. You, you're you're tied to that industry as well, and and the new yep. tax that's coming in in June, like to offset the capital yeah. gains tax, it would be a great gift that, if it comes in if it comes in June. But uh, you know what? I, I've been bullish on June, but you know, a lot of people are saying it's going to be that July twenty five basis points. Wow. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think you're looking at July as well too. But I also think too, like it could be too little, too late. Remember when they started to raise interest rates? Yeah. They went a quarter and then all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, now we got to go a half and three quarters, right? So we could see that on the other side too, where you end up seeing they wait till July, you see a quarter point jump into Conrad's points. Uh, a lot of things take time off in August. Bank yeah. of Canada doesn't meet in August. So then you're going to have two sets of numbers coming in September and it might be one of those, oh Jesus moments. And you might even see a half a, half a point cut in September then if you wait too long. Yeah, That's a great I've got... Yeah. Yeah, I've got mine coming up on this building uh, in August, and uh, I was paying uh, three and a half percent, which was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Should have took the ten year, the ten year rate. Yeah. I should have took the ten year rate, man. I'm really paying the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna really feel that one on this building. Well, well, but, you know, yeah, the Bank of Canada has already said if rates, you know, even even what they're projecting, they're saying that in 2027, most mortgage holders will be paying about 37 percent more. In, in payments so by oh, 2027 wow. yeah about 34 35 percent even even with the the you know things kind of sliding a little bit right going down but it's still it's still a big ticket and it's gonna it's gonna affect the economy to brian's point 
all that money is staying, you know, it's kind of staying in their houses and not going into the economy. But you know what? A quarter point cut for somebody is only about $300. Would it be about $300 on a $500,000 mortgage? That's my estimate. Right. Yeah. What do you think? Is it something like yeah, that? Yeah, I use like, a, I was looking at a line of credit. Quarter point is around 100 bucks. You know what yeah. I mean? Depending on the mortgage amount. But it's like, it's, but when two, you start adding up, yeah, when you start adding up, like that money going back into the economy is going to be huge, right? Like if everybody's putting in an extra two, 300 bucks, but right now they're not. They can but barely you know, make them. Yeah. You know what? You know what's going on though? The high end restaurants are thriving. It's the mm. mediocre, the like the 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 uh, roadhouse restaurants. They're starving. They're not doing as well. Yeah, that lower like, end because the lower are- end they're not doing. But the the high end restaurants, I mean, they're, I mean, they're charging and and they're filling up You're those right. restaurants. So it's the, the 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 obviously the the wealthy still have the money. They're still going out there and, and enjoying life like like nothing's happened. Well, thirty percent don't have a mortgage. You got to remember that. We're only talking about so thirty percent, thirty, thirty-two maybe percent don't have a mortgage. Thirty-three, thirty-five percent do have a mortgage, and the rest rent. So, yeah, that up rent. You're right, Rob. That's a yeah. good comment because everybody, all, all you see everywhere is like McDonald's taking it on the chin. You know, lower value meals. They're seeing their numbers. Uh, their their numbers are not uh, what they used to be. So, yeah, at that lower end, they're really feeling it. So. A two three hundred dollar savings per month could make a difference uh, with people going back to that lower end fast food, right? Oh yeah, yeah and you got to think the the most impacted segment of the market is the person that bought in twenty twenty two, right? Like somebody yeah. bought in the peak of the market, and that is you know as as tough as that segment of the market is, it's a small segment of the market, right? If you bought in 2020, 2021, you had a five year mortgage, you built up some equity still because we did the numbers on that. Even with the increase and decrease, you're still up almost fifteen. 20% over the past five years, right? So you still have equity. You're still able to normalize that payment out, but there's still people out there spending money. We still see it all the time. And five oh, year yeah. fixed rates, yeah. five year fixed rates right now, like you can get a rate under 4.8%. Yeah. Like if you're buying a house, like I don't even understand why people are considering variable right now. You're like waiting for this, this seven to nope. go down to six and a half when you can get under five. It doesn't even yeah, compete yeah. to me right now. Is it no, is it is it worth signing for under uh, a four point eight at uh, five years, uh, Brian? What do you think? Do you think because uh, let's, let's say 100%. six months six months from now, what are you going to get? Four four point five, maybe four point two yeah. down the road? No, not even no. Because the thing is, is that the variable rates are the ones that are going to drop, not the fixed yeah. rates. They will not drop in direct correlation right, right right so if that when they say the very when they say rates are going to drop by one percent you're going to see that variable bank prime go from seven two to six two you're not going to see the five-year no. fix go from 4.7 to three seven right. and they eventually no. have to go this way so yeah i'm I, like i did the well, numbers like on on, on a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage from seven to six and and, and a quarter it's 229 dollars a month savings it's not something dramatic you're you're better off taking that big chunk of savings going at four, eight, because the market's going to, look, there's no question the market's going to creep up. We're already seeing it. The other thing I've noticed th- this week, it's been amazing. Eight showings per sale. We haven't seen eight showings per sale since like March and April of 2020, when everybody was scattering to wow. buy something. So people made those quick decisions. We were around seven showings per sale. So this week we're eight. So people are making a decision much faster than they ever have. Much, much mm-hmm. faster. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually looking for that uh, that that uh, uh, appointment center. Uh, shit yeah, it comes out looking. came out Tuesday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mi- I I missed it, and I I wish I I was looking for. It. I got I was trying to search it on my uh, on my inbox, yeah. and I got to find out what uh, I was going to call uh, Mary to uh, say. Yeah, hey, what, what email it. do you send it? What what email that okay, you send I'll, it from? I'll make sure we figure out the email. No, I'll get it's, I'll it's get a it. Great resource. It's a it's a fantastic resource, and mm-hmm. uh, you know what I think. Uh, I may use it for my uh, next uh, newsletter. So, uh, but uh, guys, I I, I appreciate your time. It's uh, 15 minutes are up and uh, listen, have a great weekend and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thanks guys.